Today I'm going to walk you through assembling your watercolor palette. Now I am using the Prima Marketing watercolor confection palette for today because it's part of a review, but you can use like a Schmincke palette or a palette that you found on Amazon. And for a list of affordable palettes, please check out the description below. And for more watercolor tutorials, why don't you head on over to my blog at natasoup.blogspot.com for loads of fantastic watercolor tutorials designed to get you painting step by step. So today we're going to assemble our palette. So this is a small metal palette. It folds out. Um, one of the problems with this palette is this does want to get stuck. It did get stuck. And then it has a removable tray and that is fairly common for decent palettes. This is the sort of palette you want to look for because it makes refilling your color is very easy and you also have additional mixing surfaces but uh, I, I like to keep my palette inside when I'm painting. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to unwrap our watercolors and if you're having trouble following along you can check out my blog for photos. So when I set up my watercolor palette I do it one color at a time. So I'm going to set this aside up there. I'm going to unwrap the plastic and you guys can see how that looks. It's in a fairly smooth little container and then I'm going to use a sharpie to at least write the color number on the bottom of the color. All right, so using a Sharpie, I'm gonna write on the side the number. And I don't know that Prima sells these open stock. So I don't know if we can replace these pans if and when our colors will run out. However, the palette is so nice, it would make a really nice little travel palette. So I'm gonna go ahead and unwrap number 14. And for the full review of these watercolors, do check out the Prima Marketing Watercolor Confections review, also on this YouTube channel, but also on the blog. And after I unwrap this one, so there's two layers, there's the, the paper label, and then there is a plastic wrapper around that. And that is number 14. And you guys can get a look at that. So I will check in with you guys after I've unwrapped and labeled all of these. All right, guys, so we've got these all unwrapped and I have the labels near them. I've also labeled the side, not the bottom. The bottom would be fine, but we're going to tape these down using a little bit of washi tape. Uh, double stick tape is also great. You just don't want to use a permanent tape because it's going to be harder to remove your pans from the palette. So we're going to take a piece of washi tape. It happens to be very cutely colored washi tape sort of going with our tropical theme, although that wasn't intentional, and then place it on the bottom of the pan. And we're going to do this with all of them, and then we're going to push our metal uh, container back into place. So I'm gonna do that in time-lapse. And then once you have a row filled, you can just go ahead and push your little metal uh, stopper in place. The combination of the tape and the metal stopper should be enough to keep these paints from going anywhere. And I push them really close together so I do have a small amount of space here at the end. Now with these sort of sets you could if you so desired do another row of your own paints. Well maybe not quite like that way but going long way. And half pans are available both on Amazon and through Jerry's Artorama. So if you wanted this to be your main kit you could fill the whole middle with colors as well or just with colors that are more useful for what you do um, sort of to make this a more complete kit so off camera I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the rest of the row the next step is to fill out the swatch card if you are watching both the how to set up a palette and this review or this video on how to set up a palette and the Prima marketing uh, watercolor review then you'll notice that this part is exactly the same and that is because uh, I wanted to use it for both. 
and you can't do it twice, right? So to do this, the first thing you wanna do, if you're trying to get an accurate swatch of colors, you're gonna need a brush and you're gonna need a cup of clean water. I know you can do it with a water brush, but I find those colors are more muted, so it may be deceptive. If you only ever plan on using a water brush with these, some of the things I'm going to tell you are gonna be applicable and some are not. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to want to activate the pan. And the way you do that is you put a dab of water on each pan and you give it a few seconds to a minute to sort of soak in and you're going to get a much more accurate color response than if you just try to work directly from the pan and if you are doing a watercolor painting I recommend you do this step for any colors you plan on using all right so we're going to give that a second to soak in all right, now starting from you know the area we worked first, we're gonna kind of mix that in a bit, get a nice brush full, and then we're going to apply one layer of color to each square. And you don't wanna fill the whole square because they're gonna bleed into each other unless you give them time to each dry and then that's pretty time consuming. And even if you're doing a different palette set than this, even if you're doing a self-assembled palette set, having a reference card like this with names or numbers is a huge help when you're selecting colors. And I use mine when doing seven inch carrot pages. Now, if you're not familiar with seven inch Kara, you really have no excuse at all because I've started releasing the pages as a webcomic. So if you enjoy my art, my videos, my tutorials, please do check it out. And I'm working now on the second. These are some pretty basic colors and I will list them off in a bit. I think I can get pretty close to what I think these colors are. Okay, so from top to bottom, I believe this is Viridian Yellow Ochre, um, a bad ultramarine, um, yellow gold, scarlet, maybe a hunter's green that tends kind of dark, gee, maybe a cadmium red, um, probably a dioxine violet, a gamboge yellow, an opera rose, a Prussian or an indigo blue, and that brown is a really generic brown. Mm, it's not red enough to be burnt sienna. It could be um, burnt ochre. So yeah, those are the colors that I am guessing the official, official color names for the colors in the tropical set. All right, so for true color accuracy, I need to let these dry fully, but I can go ahead and put my little palette back in my, or rather my little tray of paints back in my cute little palette. So I will see you guys in a little bit. All right, so most of my colors have had a chance to dry. Not all of them. This paper isn't really great for watercolors. It is uh, buckling a little bit and there's no texture or tooth to it. But you know, I could turn around and um, print out my own or even hand label my own on watercolor paper. So while it's not as nice as I would like, it is better than nothing. So I hope you got, oh, that's right. We ought to do some comparative colors. So we have our number 13, which according to the wrapper is a pastel green. Nope. We have number 14, which, no, that's 21. Is this 14? Oh my goodness. Which according to the wrapper is a very light pastel pink. We have number 15, which is um, a little more lavender on the swatch. And I know these are just to be like cutesy woo. They don't really mean anything. But if you're not familiar with watercolors and if you haven't been duped before, if you haven't been burnt before, you don't read a lot of reviews, you could get tricked. So that's why we're going through this step by step. Then you have this beautiful lime green color 
as opposed to a green gold. Now I have to say green gold is one of my favorite colors, especially Windsor and Newton green gold because it shades from like a chartreuse yellow to like a rich deep olive. It's a beautiful color and it's fantastic for painting grass like in Kara. Um, but definitely not what the wrapper indicates. Then we've got number 17, which is sort of like a peachy pink on the wrapper, but is a hot vermilion <laughs> when you swatch it. Um, then we've got sort of like a muted subdued green, which is more of a hooker's green when it dries. Then we have what you would think would be sort of like um, a light fuchsia pink. And it's almost this um, is maybe more of a magenta. I'd said it was a cadmium red, but it's a little too cool to be a true cadmium red. So it might be magenta. Our purple here is a darker shade of lavender, a light purple, as compared to a very dark dioxine purple. Although it is a good purple in that it's sort of a middle of the road purple. So you could mix it with your magenta here and get a nice mauve or fuchsia. You can mix it with your blue up here and get a nice um, bluish blue violet. Then we've got our gamboge color, which is a golden, like a goldenrod color. Now this shows it as like a, almost a honey yellow, more like mustard. And it is definitely a warmer yellow than that. And it would have been nice if they included a cool yellow, but you can often use your um, green gold, your chartreuse green as a a, a cool hued yellow um, if you dilute it enough. Then we've got number 22, which is um, a little more purple according to the swatch than number 19. In here, it's definitely pinker, so it's definitely cooler than um, number 19. We've got 23, which is sort of like a faded blue jean color, which would have been a beautiful color to have, which is an indigo in terms of looks. And then we've got number 24, Four, and um, it's like a nice kind of latte color, but it's much richer here. In fact, this dried richer than it went down. Um, and the wrappers do not include an actual color name anywhere. So my guesses are approximate based on years of watercolor usage and research and reading reviews and writing reviews. So I'm doing the best I can. And I do know that like color names, even amongst art supply companies, like like Windsor and Newton, it's still approximate. A hooker's green by Windsor and Newton is not going to be the same as a Daniel Smith or a Holbein, but they're going to be very similar. So that's kind of what I was basing these color names off of. So I hope you enjoyed this unboxing and demonstration, and I hope you guys will stick around. Um, I'm gonna demonstrate these a little bit further because I'm curious as to the opacity of these colors because these are inexpensive watercolors, and they tend to use optical brighteners to get these sort of saturated colors. Optical brighteners being like talcum powder, towel, chalk, um, colors that will turn to mud if you paint too, too many layers. And that's something that's really important to know if you wanna do more detailed watercolors. So I will test for that, and I'm also going to do a field test demonstration so we can really find out how these colors perform. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you will consider leaving a like and definitely consider subscribing. I do all sorts of fantastic art supply reviews, demonstrations, tutorials, overviews, both here and on my blog. And if you would like to learn how to watercolor, if you're watching this video because you purchased one of the Prima watercolor sets and you wanna know what other people think of them, head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com and go to my watercolor basics hub page. I have loads of reviews and tutorials and demonstrations on there as well, spanning over five years. So um, I really think it is a great resource. I would love to see it get more love. So if you enjoy it, if you enjoy what I do, please share that with two friends that would help me out immensely. If you want more videos like this, if you want more reviews, they are kind of expensive to do. This was on sale, so I couldn't resist, but these sort of reviews do add up. So head on over to patreon.com slash natosoup. Join the Art Nerd community for back backer exclusive videos, physical reward tiers, and early access videos, like an early access video of this here. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you again really soon, and I Hope you guys have a great day. Bye.